the bag at Holden half time. Melbourne trailing the Western Bulldogs by four points and there's been certainly a fair bit of controversy around the Melbourne football clubs in the last couple of weeks. And Collingwood coach Mick Malthouse has a penchant of uh, using philosophy to describe situations. He once said, the ox is slow but the earth is patient. In recent times, he could be paraphrased even further to say, the ox is slow paying and Simon Beasley, the bookmaker, has lost patience. Sam Newman and the ox. Well, what are you doing down at Melbourne since you stopped playing? You're surely you're not becoming a corrupting influence down there. Oh, I should hope, uh, certainly think not. I haven't uh, really had much time down there and uh, uh, I've actually stood away from the club a little bit and uh, just focused on my own life. You become the human headline. When they're going badly, you're up them and you're getting their players to bet and they're getting into trouble betting. You're introducing people to bookmakers. Don't you have a responsibility now that you've left the club? Do you honestly believe that? Well, what is all this about then? Uh, why is your Nothing. name associated with the blokes who owe hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars? Why don't you let them concentrate on football? I, I have been. I, have been. I, I introduced them to uh, this bookmaker some 12 months ago. Well, wh why did you? Well, because they prefer to bet with the bookmaker than bet on the TOB. That was it. Simple. Well, easy, easy for them. They can do it over the phone. They don't have to go to the races. Nice and simple. And it was an introduction only. And if Simon Beasley wanted to use those players uh, or let them bet with him. It was his due diligence to make sure that everything was above board. Travis and, uh, and Daniel Ward, they've fa uh, owned up to their mistakes and let them get on with it. Well, the, the club have been fantastic, supported them. They're going through a bit of hard time now and uh, it should have been kept in-house, but do, it hasn't been. Do you, do you owe uh, any of the bookies, David? No, not one cent. You, you, you hooked on gambling yourself? I mean, I not it's any of our business, but I mean, let's make it our business. I enjoy it. You're a gambly holic are you? A gambler holic no, are you? Well, I have never have had a bet in my life. That explains it. Well, explains what? <laughs> it explains like you're the person you are. Well, what is that sort of person? Conservative. Well, I'm conservative, but I don't uh, meddle Recluse. in other people's business. If I'm part of a football club, I don't rope the players I used to play in with into getting into trouble betting by introducing no, you, them to bookmakers. You no, know, you do. You bag them, you can them, and you do nothing. Oh, and you don't. No, I don't. Well, I tell you what, I at least let them concentrate on football rather than getting them uh, sidetracked on issues that have nothing so to do with you'll football. So you'll let them, you'll let them concentrate on their footy. Yes. But if they don't play your way, you can them. David, well, that's our, that. What are you talking about? David, that's can I our jump job. in there? Yes, Is mate. there a problem with gaming and gambling, particularly with young footballers at the moment? Have they got too much time and money on their hands? Yes. I, I don't think so. I just, I just believe that their managers and the footy clubs have just got to monitor their payments that no lump sums go out without being recorded. So if the lump sums are going out, they go to the house loan and uh, not to the bookies. It's an unhealthy environment that you're leading these young players into. I'll tell you now, before uh, I was involved with Travis and Daniel, they were betting anyway. That is it. It's their property. They're grown men. They're 25 and 27 years of age. You decided, they can gamble. So why did you get involved then? If they were betting anyhow, why did you get involved? Why did you stick your oh, I, actually, I actually wasn't involved. They asked me who I bet with and I told them. David, uh, your name was mentioned in the story that was written by mm. Caroline Wilson in The Age. Uh, uh, you said last week on Triple M you were thinking of taking legal action. Is that uh, going to continue? Yeah, I spoke to uh, my solicitors. We've sent off letters to uh, the Bookmakers Association. Um, not, and that wasn't to do with Caroline. Uh, we also sent one to The Age and Caroline itself. So um, we're just waiting for a response. It won't be legal, but it's just we wanted to put our story forward and uh, we wanted them to know what we, what we think about the but whole situation. What's the feeling amongst the footballers uh, that they were named? Devastated. Absolutely devastated. It's, it'd be like uh, Sam or yourself are owing money on a credit card. The bank don't make it public that you owe 15000 on a credit card. It's, yeah, it's, so it's take your house, though. It's, yeah, it, well, exactly. Yes. They, they will go and take your house or whatever. But what, what should have happened if, if Simon needed the money that bad, he should have gone to the club earlier, sorted it out and kept it in house. And there's no doubt about it that it's leaked and it's leaked from his uh, organisation because the figures that were bandied around were spot on and they would not have been spot on if it hadn't have gone have out. Have you spoken uh, to Simon Beasley? No, I haven't. Have you bet with him again? No. Oh, so you've introduced two players from the Melbourne Football Club to Simon Beasley, but you've withdrawn now and are going somewhere else. I'm in front with Simon, so I'll stay that way. So David, do you think that it's a worry that footballers at their age, and they're in their early 20s, but uh, they can't be trusted to look after their own affairs, that they have to, the club has to nurse them through? And, and for that matter, why, why is the club well, doing it, not their well, managers? I, look, I think they can handle their own affairs. The, the issue well, is here yeah. that Simon has used the medium and uh, the position that they're in, and they've got no recourse whatsoever. So it's absolute fear factor that uh, he's put on them to pay up this money, and they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They did the wrong thing, but 
let's be honest, he didn't name any tycoons that owed money, did he? All right then, fair enough. Sam? Well, I don't know. I mean... He was owed the money. Who? Beeson. That's right. But it goes two ways too, though, Ed. And uh, we don't need to go into that. But look, it's gone, it's finished. The, the boys have copped enough punishment. They're, they're the well, ones that have been paid. Patient. They're paying at the moment. They've got a payment plan. Oh, on the board. Boys, we're going to have to leave it there drip, because we've had enough. <laughs> God, fair Hold on, half time has come to an end. Thanks very much, uh, David, for coming up and facing the music tonight and putting no, no the problem. side of the conversation across. Sam, Thanks thank you very Sam. much. A wonderful that. day today. There's Geelong oh, honoured one of their really? legends. We'll take a break. On the other side of Holden half time, Friday night football continues and it's a beauty. The Western Bulldogs by four points over the Melbourne, but you can bet they'll come back after this.